Okay, I'm back. Um, ten minutes, I think it took me. Um, I've stuck the heart border all the way around, and of course we've had it on here. Now the next thing we're on is this flap. Um, I'm going to stick, because we've got the beading on the front and we've got the beading on the back going all the way around, I just think it would be nice to have the continuous beading going on the top of this. Um, so all I'm going to do, just for the time being at the minute, um, because I've got something planned for that middle bit, I need to move this up so you guys can see what I'm doing. I'm just going to roll a strip of beading and don't forget i'm going to show you i'm actually going to tear this apart and show you how you can make how you can make how can you reuse um everything i've put on how you can reuse it all this is all good while me saying oh yeah you can reuse it and let me not show you i just think that's just as important so I'm going to stick the bead in there. Now, there's a few like places I want to stick the bead in, such as just here and just there. And there's a few there. Right, that's all I'm going to do on the beading section. scissors is covered in glue now does anybody know oh now i've seen it on somebody's channel and i don't know what it's called which is why i'm asking sorry guys i'm not for um of the you can buy stuff to put on your scissors that will get the glue and the um you know the if you're using double-sided tape, you know the sticky bit of that tape? You can get that off your scissors. But there's a certain type of project that you can buy. I can't full of no money remember what it's called. So if you guys can remember, I'd really appreciate you telling me what it's called. Because my scissors um, does get tend to get covered in quite a lot of um, um, glue. See my little dog now, she's gone from crying at me to wanting to play with her to barking outside <laughs> and waking the street up. Right, okay. So, I'll show you what we've got so far. So this is what we've got so far. We've done all the beading. and uh, We've done some of the fat backs. Um, I am going to put two here, and then this middle bit I'm going to show. I'm going to do something with in a second. I've also, when you open it up, I've put a heart border all the way around to make it pretty. So, to finish this little um, envelope off, I'm going to put the flat backs. Wish my dog would stop barking. I'm going to put the flat backs here. Here, here. I don't want to go too close to this middle section, and I'm going to put one there. Okay, let me open this up. Um, there's one there. One there. I do apologise if you can hear the TV. It's not me swearing, I promise. I'll be watching Mrs. Brown Boys. Right, put that in there. Now, this top part, I promised you all that we were going to do something special, and we are. Now, I'm going to have to sort of do a little bit of a tidy up there. I'll need to get to my big shot. So, bear with me two ticks while I up sort of um i want to show you the card that i've began to make as well you may need that i'll put that there
going to keep those corner bits for tacks because you know you never know when you're going to use them i mean you could use them in your journals in your albums you know the albums that i've lucky enough got sent this week um i'm going to keep them for that because i'm actually going to use my albums and i'm going to start filling them up with ideas um my attempt to you i tend to spend hours upon hours looking on pinterest um i love the images on there and i love looking at different things on there so that's what i tend to do nine times out of ten so my plan is that my album was going to be things i've seen on pinterest and so forth right now i haven't got i wish i had but i haven't got a packet of wet wipes to show you oh look just right pass out the pinch works in case you didn't know okay right where did my oh it's there right it's tidied up a lot since what i had it from now i bought like i said i think i'm gonna do i think i'm gonna do a haul um of what i had out of the range the other day now i bought a couple of dies um, the other day um, when I bought and I think they would go really nice on here because I'm going to build some what we're going to do on the edge because as you can see there's no paper on that side or that side what we're going to do to finish it off is we're going to use a die then build our flowers apart you know around that so the, one of the flowers I'm thinking of building one of the dies I'm thinking of doing she's back in here driving me mad is this is the small doily now i have been after one of these for ages yeah i've been after one of these for ages um and they are beautiful in intricate dies this is sweet doily die two now i believe there's four of them and the reason i say this four is because this is the other die that i got and i said sweet Dixie Doily Die 4. I haven't got the in between, but those are the very similar um, sets of dies. So that's what the small one comes out as. But I thought because this a bit being a corner, um, I was going to use this. Now, this is beautiful, intricate designs, and you can cut in both and stencil with with it as you can do the other two like i said i think i will come back and show you my haul of goodies these past few weeks um because i haven't done one in ages and sometimes when you see something on youtube and there's it's a near a shop near you a shop near you um you go oh wow i've been looking for that i'll go out and buy one so it's always useful to know where people are going there craft stuff from i always find it useful so i will be doing a video either tonight or tomorrow definitely to show you what i've got now this hasn't been opened and i've got a funny feeling i've got to cut the top have i got to cut the top yeah i've got to cut the top to get into the die which is fine oh. There's a quite couple of bits and pieces I've been stocking up on. Right. Let's get the guy out. Now, because this is pattern paper, I'm going to use, and I'm going to see if I've got some of, I'm going to use this shabby sheet paper now. I don't know where, oh, that's just enough. Look that was made for that right so my big shot is next door to me unfortunately i can't show you that because to show you that i would mean i'd have to lift it in front of you and lift it back over and to be honest my back is absolutely in pieces um tonight so i'm just going to um cut it first and then i'm going to show you how i'm going to emboss it but i've got some special plates to bring out the embossing bit of the die. 
Right, okay. So, oh, uh, did I? Maybe it may did the dye the wrong way. <laughs> oh, right. Let's try again. Oh, I can't believe it did that the wrong way. But no, they will. See? Okay. So this is the. I'm going to move this out the way because I, I want to show you the um the sandwich. Now somebody asked me when I did the information on how to do a big shot. One of you guys asked me what a framelit dye is. I think it was Siobhan. Siobhan. And a framelit dye is a dye where you've got the frame, basically. Um, it looks, I don't know whether there. That's a framelit dye where you've got the frame um, of something. A triplet dye is a die that gives you the dimension so you cut each piece out and then you would attach each piece either by like a piece of elastic or string or something and then it would give you the dimension so it would either twirl or it would give you the dimension of the page so that's what a triplet die is sometimes you would find cards that have triplet dies on them in the card shop they are quite expensive, but that's what a triplet die is. A framelit die is that. It's a die that's in the shape of a frame. And uh, that's so that could be your oval, your round, your square, your rectangle. And sometimes you get like um in a pack, you can get like six dies in a pack, framelit dies, but that's what a framelit die is. So we get it gets cut out the same way as any other die. So basically I do have now <laughs> right this is basically what I have I had a plate that says not my non-cutting mat and as you can see I've clearly cut into it purely by mistake but that is what happens when you tend to use the same plate over and over and over again and it tends to buckle in the middle now i've come across a way of making them straight but i want to test it on my plates first before i sort of say about it um and i watched a video and this woman was saying oh in order to put the plates die you stick them in the oven and you put the casserole dish on top and oh my days i was like really so she took the t she basically what she had well <laughs> what she had and i shouldn't laugh what she had was a casserole dish a da um a plate and another casserole dish she stuck it in the oven because she thought the weight would straighten them out she stuck them in the oven they came out one actually straightened out fair play to her one was straightened out so it, it did work uh, but that one was at the top of the oven the other one she put in was at the bottom of the oven and the other one actually shrunk um because it's plastic it didn't shrink it shrunk and it melted so I don't suggest putting them in the oven but I have got a little way of how to straighten them out but I want to test them on my plates first anyway you get your extended multi-purpose platform you get a platform with any um, die machine that you buy I'm actually using a big shot um, a Sizzix big shot um, I, it came out it was I don't think it was last year year before before you it's the new one out anyway um i know i have seen the miniature ones that sits on the table that's my next on my list anyway you put a plate down now this plate i've marked b on one side and a on the other and the reason i've done that is when i put it through the machine and it's laying that way and it comes out i flick the machine the plate over and I do it again and I keep flicking them and then that reminds me I have flicked them so if A is facing up when I go through it the next time I want to put it in I need the B to face up so it doesn't buckle as much so let me show you the buckled one this is the buckled one and this is the straight one that would be the best way to show you that and that's because I put A on one side and B on the other and I'm sort of continuously turning them so that goes on there your piece of paper card whatever you're using goes on there i'm sort of 
I still want to cut um, felt out and material out and real thin pieces of wood. That's my one of my ideas that's going to go on my album. That's what I want to do. And then I've got another plate exactly like these, which I've marked with my non-cutting mat. And then that reminds me that I will only ever have one plate that's got the lines in them. But as you can see, I have when I've put it through the machine. I've had the die facing up, which means when that when it cuts through paper, it leaves an indentation on the plate. So if you have it facing down, you will only ever have one plate with the indentations in. Thought I'd let you know that. So that's going to go in like that now into my machine. And I haven't got an automatic ones, although they look awesome. Um, I've actually got a little handle and a swipe left right hand side which I turn and I don't know whether you can hear the crinkling noises but I love listening to them and then that, mis that means the, the piece that I've put in has actually cut so let's see what we have, what we got now I actually want to emboss this piece so there's my piece it's cut and I'm not going to take it out of there I'm going to actually leave it in there though there is a bit but there that's in the way right so i'm going to leave it in there like so and then i take my circle mat and my knock knock it's not called a knock knock it's called oh god what's it called it is called this it's in a busy one um it's called an impressions pad now it's the same as your plate it's exactly it does exactly the same thing as your plate um some people call it a knock knock basically what that means is when you knock on it it doesn't knock um and it's hard it is comes i thought it came only came in a black or a gray that's the colors i've ever seen but when mine came it came in a white so i presume it comes in white gray or black um but check it out they don't i you know it does last a long time and um, this you will need this if you're embossing dies if you're embossing folders you won't need this but for in dies you will so that's the impressions pad now this is actually called a silicone mat so if you scrunch it up in your hand and let go some people call it a squishy because when you feel it it feels like you could drink water out of it it feels to me it feels like a sponge a real squishy sponge so you will need that and what happens is now I, like i say i don't know whether i'm repeating myself i don't think i did this when i did the um big shot when i was revealing everything what happens is when you put your machine through when you put this through the machine right this when you, so you've got your i'm trying to think now you've got i'm so tired i can't think so i'm going to go to my platform because my platform will tell me so in our platform it'll tell me what i need in what order so we're on the top one so i will need my mat my, you know my cutting mat I will need the die and the paper facing up. Leave the paper in the die because that will help you. Because when you take the paper out, as you know, bits and pieces all might fall out. And then you've got the trouble then of placing it exactly back in the way that came. You're better off just leaving it in. So the next thing you'll need is your silicone rubber mat. And then your impressions pad. Now what happens is when the roller puts pressure, I don't know whether I'd be able to do it without the roller, but when the roller puts pressure, it expands the squishy mat and the squishy mat expands. So it'll, go, it'll keep coming out and it'll keep coming out. And that's because of the pressure of the roller in the center. When you're rolling it, the, the, the actual silicone mat will expand and it will come out to the sides 
I think I'm going to turn my camera and show you what exactly what I mean. See if I can get to turn the camera. I do apologise for this video being long. I mean, it is not in an envelope. But I just thought... I didn't know whether I had explained it in my big shot when I was doing my big shot. Um, right, so let me turn you. So you are looking at this. And I'm going to shout to Chris now for my charger. Okay, Chris? 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 Can I have my charger, please? Right, okay, so we're at the big shot. The big shot is dedicated to the side of my desk. I'm actually going to turn it so you can see it. And all you're looking for while I turn the brink, the side, is this grey silicone mat, and you're looking to see whether it expands. Now, so that you're not losing, so you're not thinking, nah, that hasn't moved, I'm actually going to put the silicone mat. Where can I put it? There's a line on this. It's really hard to show you guys. There. There's a line just here on the platform mat. When you're embossing, you need to take the top, they call it a shimmer, the top uh, plate off your platform. And then you need to put your, your cutting mat, like you say, your cutting mat, you dye with your paper facing up. Your silicone mat and I'm going to place the silicone mat dead in the middle so it's going to fold exactly like that so the silicone mat I'm going to place under my line I'm going to place it this way and then you'll see it expand so it's just under that line where I marked that it was a non-cutting mat and then the impressions pad so if you watch what it does now so i'm gonna rotate it in keep watching for that silicone now can you see it's expanded one minute ago you couldn't see it keep watching keep watching keep watching keep watching can you see it expanding again just there so it may come out the top line of you and I was right, it's come out to the top line. Now, when we put it in, it was to the line where I'd marked that it was a non cut mat. It might come even over. And that's because the pressure of the roller is put it, the pressure of the roller, what's happening is the pressure of the roller, it's going down and it's going right. I can feel the impressions pad. Underneath that, there's a squishy pad. So the squishy pad isn't hard. It isn't like a plate. And what happens is it's going, well, you're not a plate. And I'm putting all this pressure on you. I sort of want you to get out the way. So it's a bit like when you squeeze water out of a sponge and you get all the water. It's a bit like that. It's trying to get rid of that silicone mat because the machine is saying wait a minute that's not a hard mat that's a soft mat and you've put a soft mat in this machine are you off your end <laughs> or is this right that's what it that's why it does that it doesn't affect the actual dye itself i'm going to rotate it the other way and you'll notice now that the silicone mat is going to get smaller and smaller and smaller until it's actually underneath this impressions pad watch now it's underneath the pressions pad now my dye is actually finished so i'm going to turn you this way and up and we're going to bring it out i'm going to bring all the plates out I'm going to move this one out of the way and i'm going to move the impressions pad the silicone mat the dye and then the plate right so I have, oh no, I don't need it. This is what the impressions pad does. Can you see, let me see if I can point it out. Can you see those like little tiny stitches? And if I raise, oh, sorry guys, it's 
Tavatu up. If can you see at the back? Try at the back. Can you see how those lines are sort of sunk into the paper? On this side, it's raised, and it's quite hard for me to sort of show you it raised, but it is raised. Those hearts are, and the same goes for these tiny hearts up here. And there's a tiny heart there now. That it can go away. We don't need that, and we don't need this either, or that. And that's our corner die. That is, that is cut and embossed. So leave it in the die, and you'll be well away. I may have to split this video up. I didn't realise that was so long. Right, where's our envelope gone? Ah, no, I don't think so. Right. Okay. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this straight off. Work out where I want it. Because, yeah, I'm going to cut this straight off. We don't need it. And I'm not going to need that. Or anything so that can go in the bin right this now again where's my there's some of that and I'm going to use let's just use a bit of scrap of this And I'm only going to do the top of the die, I'm not going to do the bottom. So I'm just going to do... Just going to do the top. Right, turn this around. Like I said, I do apologise for this being long. And I'm going to leave half of the die hanging. And I'm going to more or less put those hearts in the centre everything else can be just sort of stuck down okay see right now I picked up some of these and it's the last thing I'm going on up projects and what they are they're just they're just white paper flowers um, I'm going to decide which ones I want to play about with and which ones I think would be big and which ones I think would be too big and too small. Um, the small ones. There's small ones there. They can two can go together. I only want a couple, so them two can go together. Uh, that one and maybe this one that's another one so that's two and we'll have one more which is them two there's two I'm going to put these back in the packet and I am going to actually go and get my what are they called what are those flowers called that I got what are they called? Well, let me go and get them. They're called, they're called, called something. And I had them in the book. Oh, I could use some of these. Yeah, I think I will. Um, that'd be too big. They may be too big. I'm trying to think what they're called, and why can't I think what they're called? Where did I get these from? They're they red. Oh, it's so annoying. Why can't I think what they're called? I've just been shopping there recently. Why am I asking you guys what they're called? Where they come from, all that? I'm probably going to notice anyway. They're the flowers. Right. Oh, I can't think where they've come from. Why can't I think where they've come from? 
Right, I'm gonna give these a bit of a gold, gold touch. Craft. No, I can't think. My mind's gone blank. They do a load of really nice, pretty flowers. You're probably screaming at me now, going, "Glad the gold!" And I can't think for love nor money what they're called. Where I've got them from? Oh, it's gonna bug me. <laughs> it's gonna bug me. Right, I'm gonna stick them down first. So because we've got a little bit of glue there. Cut these down with my lips as I've gone. I can't think, and I do apologize. My mind's gone blank. Oops. Um, let's do this one. Oh, I can't craft. Wild orchid crafts. That's where I had them from. Not the white ones, but these pretty flowers. These um, pink ones. I'll tell you which ones I had from there. Fine. Right, so. I'm going to put another two on each side and I'm going to put one rose as well. Yeah, Wild Orchid Crafts, that's where I had them from. Maybe I'd get a bit lost there. No, that's going to get lost there, so I'm going to stick that there. Right, um, if I cut these, yeah, Wild Orchid Crafts. Now this video is going to be split up to two videos and I sort of hope you understand why. I'm using the flowers Linda sent to me because they're just gorgeous. Um, 